Hi, welcome to Econ 366, Economic Development. This is your first video lecture. In this lecture, I'm going to introduce the course and introduce the main themes and of discussions under this course. Now, what is economic development? What are we going to talk about in this course? Now, remember, uh, it is a it is not it is a study of economic transformation of material living conditions of people in developing countries but it is not just a study of how to raise their incomes and this is a critical point i want you to understand at the very outset that rising incomes is extremely important but is not the be all and end all of economic development because as you know incomes are a means to buy things like healthcare, education, and goods and services that one has reason to value. But income per se is not the end all goal. Increasing incomes per se cannot be the goal of development. For instance, you can have a situation where people are very rich, but, there is, but they don't have any food to eat because the agriculture in the, in the region has failed and they have no connections with, it, with the outside world and can trade and get food. You can also think of a situation where people are extremely poor, but the governments in those countries ensure that everybody has access to food irrespective of their income. And therefore, you can decide which of these two societies would you consider more just or more equitable. So those are some of the questions that we talk about and that lens of development is based not just on rising incomes but also on what that income can buy and how that income can be used to give people reason to value the life that they lead so what are we going to be interested in this course obviously we'll talk about income we'll also talk about you know the quality of life maybe how many cars do you have or how many holidays do you take in a year but more importantly questions like life expectancy how long do people in a given country live uh, how how does that affect your well-being well of course a longer life needs to a more productive is is an indication of better quality healthcare and better quality healthcare in turn increases the productivity in your society finally how do how do people uh, uh, how well or how badly are people educated in the in these societies how easy is it for people to access education? Is education contingent on your income, thereby creating a society where only the rich can afford education? Or education is considered as an entitlement or a right, whereby everybody, irrespective of their incomes, is allowed to access education. However, this course will also talk about aspects of inequality. Does it only matter that how much you earn and whether that's sufficient to make ends meet for you? Or is it important that how much do you earn relative to your neighbor or relative to the average income in your country? And then to discuss whether inequality is a good thing or a bad thing. And finally, we'll talk about not just equality in incomes or eradication of poverty in the economic sphere, but also questions of political participation. How is the country's political life organized? Does everyone has a stake in the economy or the decisions are taken by a small minority of people? Now, these have huge implications on what policies are undertaken and they are they're also critical in deciding what trajectory of economic development a given country follows. Now, just to give you an idea of what some of the pioneers in this field thought about, uh, Albert Hirschman, who you may know, was a leading uh, figure in development economics. He says the subdiscipline of economic development has gained considerable luster and excitement through an implicit idea that it would slay the dragon of backwardness virtually by itself, or at least its contribution to this task is central. Now, obviously, Hirschman is being, uh, you know, is being a bit sarcastic here. But the idea of why development economics comes into being and what it entails is very well captured by this 
uh, by this by this phrase where he says that dragon of backwardness will be slain by development economics now why can it not be done by economics by itself or any other social science because here's a discipline that brings all the findings from other social sciences specifically for the purpose of solving problems of economic backwardness and well how successful or unsuccessful it's been is a question that is, that's an open question and we can continue to debate about it. <laughs> now this I think is a critical reason why one must study development economics because this paradox underscores the phenomena of development better than anything else. So I'm quoting Amartya Sen, one of uh, Nobel laureate in economics and one of the leading figures in, in development studies. He says, we live in a world of unprecedented opulence of a kind that would have been even hard to imagine a century or two ago. There have also been remarkable changes beyond the economic sphere. And yet, we also live in a world with remarkable deprivation, destitution and oppression. There are many new problems as well as old ones, including persistence of poverty and unfulfilled elementary needs, occurrence of famines and widespread hunger violation of elementary political freedoms as well as of our basic liberties, extensive neglect of the interests and agency of women and worsening threats to our environment and to the sustainability of our economic and social lives. Many of these deprivations can be observed in one form or the other in rich countries as well as the poor countries. So basically the question is, why is it that at a time when we live in a world of unprecedented opulence, we still have remarkable deprivation, destitution and oppression. And that paradox sort of explains the need why we need to go beyond the confines of traditional economic theory to find answers to these relevant questions of income generation and income distribution, which this course aims to do. So what are the questions we ask? Basically, Questions around how can we reduce poverty? How can we provide people with jobs? How can we ensure that people live longer and healthier lives? And how can we protect our environment? And then there's some even bigger questions like why are North America, Western Europe and Japan the richest regions in the world? How did East Asia, which comprises of South Korea, Taiwan, Hong Kong and Singapore, become so rich in such a short span of time? What is the role of trade for developing economies? And, how, and what role does agriculture play in economic development? And finally, some of the major debates that have historically dominated the study of development economics uh, revolve around what is the role of history? Does your process of colonization, does the process of institutions that were developed during colonizations have an impact on economic development today? Or whether post-development economies can sort of shrug uh, the yoke of uh, colonization and start a new trajectory after independence? Uh, the, the other big question we talk about is what is the role of the state and what is the role of the market? Who, what are the limitations of the state and what are the limitations of the markets? Who wins when the market decides allocation and who loses? And, you know, what, what, are, what are some of the implicit distributional assumptions that are important when we consider the role of the state or the market? By which what I mean is, who gains when the state allocates a basic service like education, right, versus the same allocation of the same service through the markets. Now, if the state allocates education, there may be a case to be made that, well, education can be considered a public good or it can be considered a right for every citizen and therefore, irrespective of people's income, the state is obliged to provide them education. On the other hand, if private sector is responsible for the provision of education, then you know the private sector or the market operates on a principle of profit and therefore only those who can afford a certain fee to make the sector profitable will be allowed access to education and those who cannot will be denied education. Now, what is, what is, the, what is the outcome of this? Which of these outcomes is superior, which is not, is something that this course uh, is going to be interested in talking about. 
So these are some of the major debates. The purpose of this video lecture is not to describe the entire presentation of the class, but to sort of highlight some of the basic and the salient features of this presentation. Uh, I would really urge you to look through and carefully read the entire presentation posted uh, uh, posted uh, posted for this week and um, a lot of the questions that I've highlighted here will be answered or at least be addressed in in the remaining of this presentation so uh, thank you so much and I really uh, would request you to to go through the entire presentation in great detail